we start today with news out of Boston. Celtics coach Ime Udoka is likely facing a one-year suspension for his role in a consensual relationship with a female staff member. That's what sources told our Adrian Wojnarowski. This is a developing story. We're here to deliver the facts, provide you with reporting, and give insight into the impact this could have on an organization that's hoping to contend for a championship. And with that, I'd like to bring back our panel and start with Woj here. Woj, how did the Celtics determine this one-year suspension? So, uh, Boston weighed everything here, including the possibility uh, of a dismissal. They looked uh, at, I think, the, the impact this has for their organization, the people involved, and, and I think for the Celtics, because Ime Udoka is in a leadership position as the head coach of this franchise, I think they see this you know, as a breach of uh, judgment, of, of trust, and, and obviously they're taking this really seriously. This is, there's never really been uh, a sitting head coach who has faced uh, uh, this kind of punishment. A one-year suspension uh, is dramatic. And so, listen, five years ago, ten years ago, three years ago, might this have been looked at differently? Um, a relationship that, that's considered improper in the workplace? It might have been looked at differently, but this is 2022, and those in charge in Boston, you know, are making a decision um, that uh, th th there was going to be uh, a significant punishment for Ime Adoka, and this is not easy. This is a coach mm. who led them to the finals in his first year. Listen, this is somebody that they have been thrilled with as a leader in that organization. I think this is a, a devastating. This has been a devastating week within the Celtics. And I think as more people have learned about the fallout of this, what has happened, I think certainly for this organization, um, it is jarring. First of all, above all else, this is potentially a family and personal issue before a basketball issue, before an employment issue. You have to remember there are people whose lives are going to be impacted by this uh, one way or another. Second, I understand the dissonance between why did Robert Sarver get a one-year suspension for all the stuff that he did we've been talking about all week? And why does a head coach get the same length suspension for what is being described as a consensual relationship? I understand the outrage. I understand the criticism. I understand all that. I think, as Woj alluded to, we just don't know all the particulars yet. And until we do, we have to consider things like, what were the workplace dynamics like? Were there power dynamics in place that made this an untenable situation? If there were, and people's jobs have to get moved or reassigned or anything like that, what harm does that, hap does that befall on anyone involved? Is that okay? Is that fair? We just don't know the answers to those things yet. And until we do, we just don't know how this is going to unfold. Maybe it is a one-year suspension. Maybe it gets reduced. Maybe he just can't return as Celtics head coach after that one year for a, a whole variety of reasons. Until we know those particulars, I think rushing to judgment on the length of the penalty is, is probably not a good idea. Well, for now, we have to look to what comes next. And Woj, you reported that Joe Mazzula will be the interim head coach here. You can see his resume on your screen. He's been a Celtics assistant coach the last three seasons after spending the previous three seasons at Fairmount State. And he played for West Virginia between 2006 and 2011 and now could become the NBA's youngest head coach at 34 years old. And we'd be remiss not to also mentioned that Missoula was arrested twice at West Virginia, once in 2008 for underage drinking and aggravated assault. He pled guilty, paid a fine, and then again in 2009 for domestic battery after an incident at Morgantown Bar. The domestic battery case never went to trial. It was settled in August of 2009. He paid a $100 fine and court costs, plus had to do 40 hours of community service. Now, that was 13 years ago. He settled and paid both fines. So, Woj, why are the Celtics choosing him as their next head coach? Well, let's start with this. This is somebody whose character they really believe in, whose leadership they really believe in, and tactically. They think this is uh, Joe Mazzulla has all the makings of a head coach in the NBA. He was one of the finalists in Utah, along with his colleague Will Hardy, who was uh, together they were on the Celtics staff last year with with uh, Ime Udoka, Hardy gets the job. Uh, Will Hardy wanted to take uh, Joe Mazzulla to the Jazz with him. Boston stepped up and elevated him. And so this is somebody who I think was going to be a head coach in this league. It comes a lot sooner. Uh, defensively played a big role uh, tactically with uh, Udoka last year on a defense that was number one in the league. But 
He is not in here. This is not a rebuild like Utah. He is inheriting a team with championship aspirations. You know, he was a small college head coach. Uh, he does have some head coaching experience. It's a lot different with uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. But uh, I think you might see them maybe bring in another veteran assistant for this staff. It's a lot of brain power that goes out the door with Udoka, Will Hardy, and now Missoula moving up. But uh, this is somebody who I know Brad Stevens really believes in and somebody who, if he wasn't going to be the interim head coach here in Boston this year, was on his way to be a head coach elsewhere. And I think with all of that as the backdrop, you have to imagine, Jalen, that the Celtics, the players, they went through this entire summer thinking that uh, Ime Udoko was going to come back as their head coach. They have championship aspirations. How does all of this impact their mindset heading into the season? Well, this is unfortunate for everyone involved because if you look at how the net season went and ended, they didn't win a playoff game and they ended up getting swept by the Celtics. I truly believe the trajectory of the Celtics and what happened to the Nets, the one decision that made the difference was the Nets hire Steve Young, I mean Steve Nash, and then they hire Ime Odoka. Like he was a terrific voice for that team that you're describing and being able to challenge Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and elevating Marcus Smart to be a defensive player of the year. But this also is a classic example of how your decision making can now influence so many different parts of your life. This decision, these potential series of decisions, unfortunately for him, may cost him his family, may cost him an opportunity to grow up in the same house with his, with his son that he has with Nia Long. It may ultimately cost him his job. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.